Larry Gilbert, that can walk up to our English notes. That's pretty interesting. Cadillac, the area's premier Chevrolet and Cadillac dealer in the greater Lima area. Sorry, Lima for over 100 years. We are proud to call this home. Gil, we have a rivalry game tonight. The two teams that know each other very, very well. These communities that come out for this game, they look forward to it all year. Records don't matter. Nothing matters. Because when these two meet, you're going to have an exciting game. Oh, yeah. It's around 66 shootouts. They're, they're, they're so far away from one another. You know, you, you throw the records out the window in this contest, especially week 10 for the season. There's a lot to be on the line tonight, especially for the hometowners. You know, with a win, they could conceivably get a home game. And then Spencerville, this is the last time that the seniors going to lace up the helmets and strap it on in place. So, yeah, it's going to be the most convenient one tonight. So you look at tonight's keys of the game for each team, starting first with the visiting Spencerville Bearcats. Well, Spencerville, you know, um, has to, you know, take some time off the clock. They have to establish themselves both in the throwing game and the running game and control the line of scrimmage. I think that's going to be a huge part to keep, you know, Delphus Jefferson's offense off the the and how about for the home one cats? Well, I think, you know, you've got to rely on what's got to do this year, and that's your running game. And besides taking the Jefferson coming into tonight's game four and two in the Northwest Conference, five and four overall. The Spencerville Bearcats looking for their first victory, and if they're able to pull off the upset tonight, you know this is one of those things where when you talk about rivalry games, the things that that you're looking at, the things that you're trying to accomplish, even if they know that this may be the last time they step on the football field this year, it would be a little bit more satisfying knowing that you may have to either potentially catch your rivals out of the playoffs or at least. Deny them that home game. Right. The other thing is, too, partner, you know, it's going to be something they can take with them the rest of their life because they won't forget, you know, games like this, especially when it's a, a very close rivalry between, like I said, up Route 66. So, yeah. And I think when you talk about the keys of the game uh, in our pregame show, and I think it w it's important, especially that, um, that matchup up front. The Douglas Jefferson team is going to want, want to run the football. These teams, their offenses are, are polar opposites. Spencerville's going to run the spread offense. They're going to air it out. want to throw the ball up and down the field. Delphus, they just pound you. They pound, pound, pound until they get that hole that they're looking for and bust that big play. And, you know, Spencerville has struggled this year with their run defense. And if they can find some way to, you know, slow down that run game of Jefferson, that's what they're going to have to do tonight to give themselves well, an opportunity. Put, you know, put Jefferson in situations where it's third down and long. Um, but they just can't let, you know, St. John, or excuse me, uh, the Wildcats get away with five and six yards at a crack on every possession. Well, the opening kick is away. It's a square, but able to be fielded by the Bearcats. Brings it up for about a four or five yard gain on that return, and that's where the Spetsville will come out for their first possession of the night. Trying to see who had to stop there on the. Having a difficult time seeing tonight because they're wearing the camouflage uniforms that are on military appreciation night. Senior quarterback Jack Shenline leads the Bearcats offense. As we mentioned, they are going to come out and they are going to want to throw the ball. Henline this year has thrown for over 1,100 yards, nine touchdowns, six interceptions, completing him at right around a 60% completion rate. Quarter rate right on the stop on that kickoff for Jefferson. Henline moves around, trying to find some space. And he is tracked down and drugged to the ground by the Wildcats. That's going to be number eight. Just speak for the second time, Carter Agner. Running down the line there as he tried to keep the football and get around the left side. Nice play by that sophomore. Six foot, 385 pounds. So Agner with the first tackle of the game. Spencerville quickly back. Henline back in the shotgun. 
takes the snap. The snap is going to be hand off the middle, but there is no room as he's made by a host of Wildcats. He's dropped for about a one yard loss. Here's the number 33, Zach Houks with the stop, the nose tackle. And this is what Spencerville is going to have to avoid. They do not want to find themselves in third down and long. They have really struggled to pick up first downs, only averaging up just under 10 first downs a game. And you know, when you find yourself in third and long time and time again, it can be really difficult to move the ball down the field. Headline one more time. Going to take the snap. Looks to air it out. Five receivers on a crossing route underneath. That's going to be number 10, Dylan Short, but no room as he tried to get to the uh, sideline and turn that up, trying to make a big game. But Jefferson does a great job in pursuit. Here to be Trent Tiefman, number two, with the stop. Yeah, they tried to get the football and after, into the athlete's hands. Dylan Short did a great job defensively with an open field tackle there by Mr. Tiefman. Spencerville on their first possession is going to have to punt it away after a three and out. Just missed having that one blocked, able to get it away cleanly. Takes a Jefferson bounce and it's going to go back right around the 50 yard line, and that's where the Wildcats will begin their first possession of the game. Now, Delphus Jefferson, as Trent Tiemann is going to bring them out. Uh, Jefferson Wildcats, kind of a three-headed monster on the ground as they've had a lot of success running the ball led by Andrew Miller. Yeah, that's a great point. You know, coming in, they've done a phenomenal job with running the football, and any three of those kids can hurt, hurt you. Andrew Miller with seven touchdowns, Trent Tingham with six, and Braylon Scalf with two. So the first handoff goes off the middle. Plenty of room. He's going to have a six or seven yard gain. And you mentioned the camouflage jersey is not making it easy tonight to pick up, but I believe that, that one was going to be number 12, Andrew Miller on the carry. And line with a stop for the Bearcats. It's going to bring up second and four for the Wildcats. Miller third in the NWC in rushing, 669 yards so far this season, but on the jet sweep, this one's going to get around to the edge. It looks like they're going to pick up their first first down of the night. And that is going to be a lot of jewelry timeout. That's Cody Bentley, I'm sorry, Cole Horston. And the sticks are going to move and give the Jefferson a fresh set of downs. Carter Orr with the stop, the sophomore, six foot two, defensive back for Spencerville. Oh. Jefferson's going to take a step, work it up on the inside. Once again, number 26, Cole Horston with the carry. Trevor Whitney on the stop, the sophomore, six three, three oh five. Big fella did a nice job shedding the block there, making the individual stop there, the solo tackle. Jefferson quickly back up to the line of scrimmage. Snap comes. Or step with the carry one more time. And this time he's going to be stuck before he can get back to the line of scrimmage. Looks like that's going to pick up about a loss of two to bring up third and long. Great play there by Hayden Hammond. Down to the backfield, dropping for a loss. So you mentioned third and long is where the Spencerville defense wanted to try to force the Wildcat offense, and here they do on their opening drop. See if they can catch in and get this ball back. A quick snap. Cap up the middle, running free. Grant Tiemann is going to take it all the way in for a touchdown. That was, you're not going to, may not have seen it, but when you take back a look at this, Spencerville was looking for a twist as a couple of linemen were trying to switch spots right as soon as the ball was snapped and opened it up. I don't know. Open it up. It open wide open, and it was just a foot race to the end zone. He even saw it, recognized it, decided to keep it himself, and was able to take it all the way in for the touchdown. Give a lot of credit to the offensive line. Eli Gill, Logan Murray, Vincent Murray, Matt Weasel, and Jesse Long across the front for 
the Wildcats opening that hole up, allowing Teeman to... To the extra point, he got Chris Jefferson on top. This is still Cleveland's fifth touchdown by Teeman. We'll step aside and be right back on WOSN. Style happens here. The Bearcats got the Wildcats where they wanted them in a third and long, trying to see if they couldn't force them in and uh, fourth down to get that ball back. But unfortunately for the Bearcats, teaming with a great recognition, able to take that one in for the first score of the game, and that was just that was just great vision by Teeman. Well, and they also caught them in a formation, you know, that, to their liking, where they could break that play up the middle of the field. Like you said, Teeman made a great decision and on his way to pay dirt. So a nice return by the Bearcats all the way up to the 38, 39 yard line. So pretty good field position for the Bearcats as they come out for their second possession. Sure was. So now Josh Henline going to come out for the second time as the Bearcats are going to look to get the offense moving. Had some struggles there in that first possession and couldn't quite get things going, but Trying to see if they can't change that up here on their second attempt. And back in the shotgun. Short, in motion, takes the hands off. Moves to the right side, but has no room. As great pursuit once again by the Wildcats. And drops Spencerville for a two-yard loss. Yeah, I'm trying to pick that number up. We slow them down on the perimeter just enough to get the teammates to swoop in and make the stop. 7-10 left to go here in the opening quarter. The Wildcats on top, 7-0. The Bearcats trying to see if they can't get something going positive on offense. Here to be Logan Murray, linebacker number 56. And he takes the snap, going to hand it off one more time. The Bearcats going to work it up the middle. They're going to be stopped after about a three-yard game to bring up third and eight. Number 13, Hayden Heyman, with that carry. Logan Murray on the tackle. There it goes back at the line of scrimmage. Headline. Sent short in motion. Going to keep it himself this time. Calls up number. Headline right up the middle. Goes right into contact there. And when he lowered his shoulder to try to initiate some of that contact, picked up just enough to get the first down as the Bearcats now picked up that first Lauderdale Drawers first down of the game and going to move the sticks. Yeah, just like you said, he put his head down. He had his mind made up. He knew what marker was. Nice job by that young man getting enough for the first down, moving the clock and controlling the line of scrimmage there with the Bearcats. Rody with the stop. Luke Rody on the stop for Wildcats. And let's just drop this one out. This one's going to be Hayden. As Hayden works his way for about a six yard gain on first down. Logan Murray again in on the stop from his linebacker position. For a six yard gain, it brings up second and four. Headline looks to the sideline, waiting for the call to come in. And like in the shotgun, Hammond to his right. And take the shotgun and look to air it out one more time. Right through the middle, wide open, great route run that time by Carter Orr. And he's going to be dropped after another Laudix Jewelry first down. And Jefferson tried to strip the football. Appeared Mr. Orr got his knee down on the turf there. So now the Bearcats finding a little bit of space in this Jefferson defense, trying to take advantage. No, not taking deep shots, not trying to force anything. Taking what the defense has given them, and here in the last couple of plays, it's produced some positive yardage as the Bearcats are on the move. It's definitely a confidence builder if you're the visitors. 
that time, Heyman not able to find any room to run. He's going to be dropped at the line of scrimmage to bring up second and ten. Voorhees and Houks on the stop for the Wildcats. No gain on that play. And you mentioned confidence, and especially here in the early going. You know, obviously we mentioned it has been a bit of a struggle this year. Uh, Spencerville um, has struggled at times with getting points on the board, you know, defensively as well. And, you know, it's, been a, it's been a tough season for them. But when you can get things going here in the early against, you know, a, a team that is a big rivalry, you know, between these two schools, you know, that confidence builds, and that's what you're looking for, trying to get that momentum going early. Absolutely. You know, we talked before the game even started, Spencerville has revamped the whole offense and went to a, basically the five wide set, and that's not something that can do that they've done over the years. So it's a change for, you know, for the kids. That last pass was complete, I believe. Dylan Short, brought down by Luke Rohde with help of Braylon Scalf. Military appreciation here at Champions Field as the Blackhawk helicopter is getting ready to take off in the background. This headline drops back, going to try to air it out. Gets it to Heyman. Heyman's looking for the first down, is able to pick it up, it looks like. Actually, it might be a little short. As it was a third and short, going to bring up decisions for the Bearcats, and it looks like they're going to try to pick this one up on fourth and one. Appeared to be teaming there with the stop, or at least slowing down just enough to keep from him getting to the first down marker. Headline with Heyman in the backfield, four wide receivers. Set his receiver in motion, going to keep it himself, trying to go up the middle. But the Jefferson defense, too much that time, got to stop it for a loss, and that's going to be a turnover on downs. Here to be Logan Miller shooting that gap there. Headline a little slow to get up as he had a lot of Wildcats around him. He's a tough kid, but he needed a little help that time as he's going to come off the field. So Jefferson going to get a chance for their second opportunity. Not quite the same field position they had on the first one as they started running around midfield, but as we saw, it does not take long for that Jefferson offense to get going. Yeah, that's a big stop right there for Jefferson uh, from a defensive standpoint. Just, you know, Spencerville was chewing up some yards there, right there, excuse me, plus some clock. So, nice stop there by the Wildcats, forcing Spencerville to turn, over, turn it over on downs. Get loud here for a couple seconds as the Blackhawks getting ready to so reset of the game clock. Take off into the skies. So here's Steeman going to pull it down, call zone number one more time. He's able to pick up about three on that carry. Brought down by a host of Bearcats. Team in this year had success on the ground, 69 carries, 342 yards, and six touchdowns coming into tonight. So kind of part of that triple threat running attack that the Jefferson Wildcats have between him, Cole Horson, who we've seen, and Andrew Miller as well. Teaman back in the shotgun one more time, takes a snap. Gonna hand this one off to Horson. Horson's gonna nice move right at the line of scrimmage to avoid a tackle. Pick up more positive yardage to bring up third and short. Hanging it on the stop along with number 75, Trevor Whitney. For the visitors, the Bearcats. Quickly for the Wildcats as they go to look to move the pile. Nice game. They see the Bearcat sidelines trying to call for a fumble as the officials are down trying to separate everybody to see if the Bearcats came up with what would be a big turnover. And they do a huge turnover for the Spencerville Bearcats. It's going to give them the ball back on the 40-yard line. Yeah, you're definitely seeing a lot of black cats going after that loose pigskin on the ground. Big stop there by the visitors. Teaming got just a little bit loose with the football, got it stripped out of his hands and put it on the turf and Johnny on the spot for the visitor Bearcats. And you know what they say, Gil, upsets are made by turnovers, so let's see if the Bearcats now are able to cash in and take advantage of this good field position. Shake it up on the last time out, he's able to come back in, he's going to drop, go deep. 
And this time, it was a nice pass. His receiver was trying to get back to him. It looks like it's going to be pass interference, though, on the Jefferson defender, not able to get his head turned to play the football that time. And it's going to be a big pickup for the Bearcats. Yeah, Jefferson defender got caught face guarding right there. See who that appeared to be, Cody Bailey, possibly number 11. Now the official's going to mark off the penalty. Going to be another first down for the Bearcats as it's going to move them all the way up to the 26-yard line of Delphus Jefferson. Quick first quarter down to 137 to go. Officials one more time needing to restart the play clock. Great facility, what they've done over here, Nate. I mean, the field turf and the key schools playing on this field turf. It's a beautiful, beautiful surroundings also. Mike takes a snap. Going to air it out one more time. Going to go right through the middle. Number two, Nate Coulter with his first catch of the night. Small flight come down on the backside. And that's going to be an illegal man down the field against the Bearcats. That's the danger sometimes of that screen or that, you know, that jailbreak that time. That's, uh, that's you got get, little antsy, didn't you? want to get down and pick up that big block to try to see if they can't get that play to go for a big yardage. And that time just a little bit too far downfield. Demon on the stop there for the Wildcats. So that's going to bring up second and 15 for the Bearcats. They're going to be at their own 31-yard line. Headline takes a snap. Gets rid of it quickly. Short. Nice spin. Gets out to the edge. He's going to try to race to the... See if he was trying to get to the end zone. He's going to step out of bounds. And it looks like they're going to mark him out at the 11-yard line, but a big pickup for the Bearcats. Oh, what a pretty block there by number 11 for the Bearcats to spring. And you said Mr. Short, correct? Yeah, the number 10, Dylan Short, with the catch and a nice job spinning to his outside instead of going inside. Grady Smith, the freshman, what a great block on the outside, hung up Bailey on the perimeter and Sprung short free to get down the sideline. Finally ran out of the boundary at the six yard line. So we're going to have a timeout on the field. We'll step us up as well. That was Jefferson on top seven. Nothing. A minute 21 left to go here. We're opening goal. But the Bearcats not going to go. We'll be right back on WOSD. at laudix.com. Adelphus Jefferson takes a timeout. Spencerville is on the move as they are now down to the six-yard line looking to see if they can't get their first score of the night. And like sends his receiver in motion. He's going to hand it up the middle, but Heyman not able to go anywhere. He's dropped for a loss at the eight-yard line. Hawks and Murray on the stop. So that is going to bring up second and goal from the nine yard line under a minute left to go here in the opening quarter. Headline. Gonna look at the handoff. It's a miscommunication at times. It looks like maybe it was trying to hit Dylan Short on a quick slant, which looks like it was open, but. Unfortunately, it's a miscommunication that time. That one's going to drop harmlessly for an incompletion. Yes, I agree with you. you know, that quick slant was open. I just, you know, a little bad timing there on the pitch and catch and threw it behind him and towards the ground. Third and goal from the nine-yard line. Obviously, four-down territory for the Bearcats here in the early going. Three receivers on the right, one on the left. Headline. Takes a snap, gonna roll to his left. 
Looks like he had the option to pitch at that time and decided to try to see if he couldn't get something going. And was able to pick up about two yards. That looks like that's going to get down to the seven, six or seven yard line. We'll see where they mark it. Good job there by Cole Hurston, number 26. Staying in his lane, making a solo tackle there because of I, I think if he doesn't get it, he's going to score, partner. In line, big athletic is able to, not afraid to deliver a hit as we've already seen. As he has no problem getting in there to try to see if he can't make something happen. And he's able to get through there. There's nothing stopping him from getting into the end. That's going to bring the first quarter to the after one. The Wildcats on top of the Bearcats, seven nothing. We'll be right back on WLSN. .com to apply today. The Bearcats coming out on fourth down and deciding to try to take the points instead of going for the touchdown. Going to line up for the field goal. It's going to be blocked as Jefferson's going to chase down and prevent that field goal that time. So the Bearcats, one more time, denied points as Jefferson now is going to get a chance to get the ball back. Here to be number 26 with the block, Cole Hurston. I believe I said that was headline kicking. I apologize. It was Emerson Lehman. He is the kicker for the Spencerville Bearcats. And I'm out on the hold, I believe. Lehman just not able to get it up as the Jefferson defense came right through the line, able to knock that one down. So yeah, after, the, after the turnover, Spencerville not able to catch in and the Wildcat defense holds. Hurston very quick getting to that line of scrimmage, getting his hands on the football. Big play there by the Wildcats. Here's Horson one more time. Tries to get around the edge. Looks to turn it up. Able to pick up about four on that play. Carter Lehman on the stop for the Bearcats. Again, Spenceville getting in the red zone, coming up empty. David. Back in the shotgun. Sends his receiver in motion. Going to keep it himself. That's a little bit of room that time. Going to pick up a short gain, right around one yard. Wesley Mack, 6'5", 345-pound defensive tackle. Solo tackle for that young man. Third and four for the Wildcats. Teaming in the shotgun. Receiver in motion one more time. This time, Teaman looking to end out. Going to throw. Has his receiver on the sideline. Nice catch that time out of bounds. And that's going to be another Laudix Stewart jewelry t uh, first down, excuse me, for the Wildcats. Good job by Bailey rotating back to the football there. Knew exactly where he was on the field. Got enough for the first down. Nice job there by the Wildcats with a pitch and catch. First and 10 from the 35-yard line. Team it all alone in the backfield. This time he's going to keep it himself one more time. Goes up the middle for a two yard gain. Team it busy here in the early going. We've seen him call his number several times. One time led to, so far, the only touchdown of the game. A long run. This team is able to take advantage of some miscommunication on the front line of the Bearcats. Wesley Mack on the stop there for the Bearcats. Couple quick solo stops for that young man. This time Horton takes it, is able to turn that corner, steps out of bounds. Depends on where they mark it, and they're going to stay out of bounds at the 46 yard line. That's going to be enough for a lot of jewelry timeout. First down, excuse me. Yeah, I think Hayden, or Heyman, got just enough to push him out here right in front of us at the about the 46 yard line. Keeps it, goes up 
up the middle and is going to be stopped after about a one-yard gain this time. So that Bearcat uh, front line is doing a nice job outside of the one long run by team, and they've really been able to kind of stop him right at that line of scrimmage. But right now it's been the edge runs that have been the big gains for the Wildcats. Yeah, tackle to tackle. Spencerville has done a decent job other than that long run. They're doing a pretty good job containing Jefferson. Brody Summers on the last stop along with Logan Johnson. Teeman looking there now one more time. A wide open receiver, blown coverage. And he is going to take that one all the way to the house. Touchdown, Delphus Jefferson. Brooklyn Scout. Now that was a breakdown of communication defensively by Spencer, Spencerville right there. And that was just breathing it by Teeman. Making that quick little out pass to the open receiver. And he sprinted his way to the end zone. Braylon Scott was left all alone after coming in motion. And I think even himself, sometimes those may are harder plays because you know no one's around you. Team in season wide open. So good concentration by both team and Scouts to complete that pass. As Delphus is looking to go on top 14 to nothing after the extra point. Kick is up and good. And after touchdown, Turns it into seven points as they now find themselves on top, 14 to nothing. Back for the Bearcats appears to be number two, Nate Poulter and Dylan Short. Jefferson kicks this one on the ground. It pops up high. Is able to be fielded by Coulter. Excuse me, that's short. Short with the spin and able to get away. Going to pick up a few more yards. And the Bearcats are going to come out and take possession on the 34-yard line. Good job by that young man. Picking the football up, getting as much as he could. Sophomore Dylan Short. See him get involved several times tonight. Let's try to see if they can't get this offense going. It's Josh Headline's going to come out and try to see. The pass is successful. We were talking oh, yeah. all during the break. They've been able to move the ball on you know two of their possessions, just not able to punch it in once they've gotten down inside the red zone. So looking to see if they can't finish the drive here to keep this one close. Two is number two. Transonic. Line moves away from trouble, able to find short in the middle of the field. Makes a couple guys miss, finds himself on the sideline, gonna try to run up and gets taken out of bounds after a nice pickup of about 25 yards and gets forced out of bounds right around the 39 yard line of the Wildcats. Braylon Scalf appeared to knock him out at the boundary over there on the far side. If Braylon doesn't get him, he's going to find his way to the end zone. That was a great play by Henline to keep that one alive as the Wildcat line had gotten into the backfield. Henline able to move to his left, throw back to his right to the middle of the field. That is not an easy pass to complete. Well, and you hit the nail on the head. They're being successful attacking the middle of the field. Headline now rolls to his right, looking for an open receiver, finds Coulter along the sideline. And he's going to step out of bounds right around the 30-yard line. Scalp on the stop for the Wildcats. That's big on a first down. You can get eight yards. And bring up second and two for the Bearcats as they continue to have some success moving the ball early in their drives, but it's all been about trying to finish that. Headline takes a snap, looking to throw. He's able to get this one off short. Stopped in his track. Excuse me, that's Hayman actually. Stopped to try to redirect, went outside. And it looks like they are going to say he got one yard and is going to be short of the first down to bring up third and one. 
Yeah, really nice job by Jefferson on the corners that are reacting to that, limiting his opportunity to get to that first yard, first down yardage marker. Pushed him out of bounds over there, put him in a third and one situation. So short, Coulter, and Grady Smith all to the right of Henline, lined up at the receiver. He's going to call it himself. He's able to get through. It's going to depend on the spot. Maybe a fumble. They're going to say no, maintain possession, but it does not look like Henline was able to pick it up. It's going to be fourth and short for the Bearcats. Yeah, trying to see who was in there for the stop defensively. Jesse Long, maybe number 70, not quite sure. Somebody for the Wildcats did a great job staying at home right there. Headline once again with three receivers to his right, fourth and short. The Bearcats have been unable to pick up fourth downs here in this first half. You got to think this is a pretty big one. Tonight's scoreboard is sponsored by Lee's Family Crispy Chicken. Lee's Family Crispy Chicken, home of the Bay Delta. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Family Crispy Chicken, home style happens here. Taking a look at the Lee's Famous Crispy Chicken. Scoreboard, you can see Delphus Jefferson on top, 14 to nothing, but a big fourth down here for the Bearcats. Headline's going to drop back, looks to air out, going to have to get rid of it, knocked down. Oh, it is going to be a real catch, and they're going to take it all the way back for a pick six, and an incredible defensive play by Delphus Jefferson that time. Great effort, his two defenders were able to get into the backfield, knock it up in the air, and take it all the way back for a score. Yeah, I'm trying to see who that was. It appeared to be number eight, Carter Agner. Not only did the ball get tipped once, it got tipped twice. Great concentration. Absolutely. Able to stay with it, pick it up out of the air, and take it all the way back for six. Looks like we had a sideline warning on the Bearcats on that play. Jefferson is going to look to come out and see if they can't make this 21-0. That's one of those where you do that tip drill in practice and it pays off the fundamental little things. Kick is up. And it is good. So Delphus Jefferson with another Leland Smith touchdown. Makes it a three-score game. 21 to nothing with 62 left to go here in the first half. Tonight's touchdown is sponsored by Cleveland Smith. Cleveland Smith Insurance Services, your first call for all your insurance needs. Elvis Jefferson with a huge defensive play on fourth and short. Come up with the interception, take it all the way back for six. You know, we've seen some really big swings here in the first half. As Spencerville, we mentioned, able to move the football. But after a blocked field goal, Jefferson able to go back to score seven on fourth and short after a couple of nice long plays by the Bearcats, able to tip that one up and take it back for a pick six. You know, just like that, you look up and it's 21 to nothing. Come on, come on. Short as he's able to grab that one out of the air, move that one up to the 32-yard line as the Bearcats are going to come out. Try to see if they can't get some momentum back their way. Appear to be Bailey on the stop. Along with Vincent Murray. Spencer has done some nice things on offense at times here in this first half. They've had some success moving the ball, especially through the middle of the field. See some nice runs out of short, some good movement by headline but just haven't been able to come up with the big play when they needed it, looking to change that here. Henline gets it out to Short one more time. Short moves in the middle of the field. He's going to be stopped after about an eight-yard gain. It's going to bring up second and two for the Bearcats. 6.30 left to go here in the first half. Braylon Scalp on the stop. 
and you hit the nail on the head. They're, they're being successful. They're moving the football and moving the chains. It's just the little mistakes that's coming back to haunt them right now. You know, credit, you know, Dallas Jefferson and their defense. They're bending, but they're not breaking. They've let it, they're not let anybody cross that goal line yet tonight. Headline pulls it down. Knots run on second down. He's able to pick up about 14 on that carry. And gets it down into the Wildcats territory. Nice play by that young man, Logan Murray on the stop for the Wildcats. Call that continues the run here as the chains are set. So Bearcats once again able to move the football. You know, blaring stat coming in, Nate. Delvis Jefferson scoring 24.7, giving up 24.8 on the season. But tonight, you know, you've got to be pleased if you're on the defensive side of the ball as a coach because they have not found the end zone yet, not being Spencerville. Swing pass out to Heyman that time. He's not able to gather that one in as that's going to fall to the turf and bring up second and ten. Yeah, that's a tough break there because he had some real estate in front of him to get a few yards. That's one of those, uh, you know, if I'm him, you know, he's probably thinking, I wish I could have that one back. Absolutely. That's a make one man miss and a lot of green in front of mm -hmm. you. Might have got caught looking downfield a little bit too soon. Headline back out with Heyman with him in the backfield. Headline looking to throw. Pressure's coming. Headline able to get rid of it. And it falls incomplete through the hands of Heyman. This Jefferson was just all over Headline, and it just took incredible effort by Headline to even get rid of that football. Yeah, and Heyman out here took a shot on the high ball by Cody Bailey. Very clean. But like you said, the pressure on the hand line, it was either he was going to take a huge sack or he was going to try to make something happen. He chose to try to make something happen. So they didn't take the big, huge loss, but they're still in third and long situation here. Third and ten for the Bearcats as they are looking for a Laudix Jewelry timeout. I'm sorry, first down. Headline drops the snap. Has to get rid of it. Throws it up. Out of the tackle box and across the line of scrimmage. They're not going to be intentional grounding. As that's going to bring up fourth down, and the punt team for the Bearcats comes onto the field. Yeah, I think that's what Jefferson's coaching staff was asking. Was there a receiver in the vicinity? And apparently they thought there was a receiver. And Headline did a good job getting rid of the football again, trying to keep from taking the sack. So now Headline back with the punt on fourth and ten. Going to try to see if he can't pin the Wildcats deep in their own territory. And that one is going picked up. And Jefferson is going to take it all the way in for another touchdown. Here's the Cody Bailey with the football crossing the end zone. We do have a flag on the field. Let's see what the flag is for before we... And it looks like the officials are pointing towards the Bearcats. Yeah, you could see it coming before the snap. The Jefferson was lining up everybody on the line of scrimmage going for that block punt. They just manhandled the line of scrimmage, and it was all red helmets in the backfield. Let's see what the penalty is going to be as the officials talk with the Jefferson sideline. Looks like he's trying to decide if they're going to decline or accept. And it's going to be a personal foul against. Well, he, he mentioned the motion towards the Wildcats. And now they correct it and it's towards the Bearcats. So that is going to be a Leland Smith touchdown. As we saw Cody Bailey take the block punt all the way in for another touchdown. And looking to see if they can't make this 28 nothing kick is up. And it is good. The Delphus Jefferson Wildcats with a block punt return for a touchdown. Interception return for a touchdown. And they have a good quarter lead at 28. Nothing will step aside and be right back on the USA. Thanks 
first down is sponsored by Long Struble. Long Struble, your family owned and operated for over 70 years. This is coming cold water and we have work online at Lodix.com. So Delphus Jefferson is going to kick the football from excellent field positioners. They are all the way up to the 45 yard line due to the um, personal foul by the Bearcats on the return from that block punt. So you can imagine, as we've seen some sweet kids tonight from the Wildcats, that they're going to want to kick this one deep to try to see if they can um, get this one to uh, put it in a dead ball situation where it's going to come out to the come 20. out to the twenty, or maybe even see if they can't make something else happen. You know, unfortunately, not being able to read the numbers, I honestly don't know who got credit for that block punt, but there was numerous red hats in the backfield. But I mean, we all know and all seen that Cody Bailey's got some great speed as he picked it up and found the end zone. And Jefferson Dots kicked this one out of the end zone, so that's going to come out to the 20-yard line where the Bearcats with 5 5 left to go here in the first half. I've got to try to see if they can't get things going offensively. And, you know, they have to be frustrated. We know that. You know, they have to be a little dejected. But this is where the seniors have kind of had to step up. They've had some good things going. It hasn't been for a lack of success. It's just, you know, been a few mistakes here or there that has really swung the tide of this game here in the first half. Well, like you said, they've had success moving the football. It's the mistakes that have come back to haunt them tonight, so to speak. A, a blocked field goal attempt that they had and then – the unfortunate interception, then the block punt. Screen pass out to Heyman. Heyman able to make a couple of guys move, and looks like he's going to get out and get a pick up a lot extraordinary first down. And nice open field tackle by Cody Bailey, because if Cody Bailey doesn't get him, he's got a lot of turf in front of him for a major game for Spencerville. It is, in fact, a lot of extraordinary first down. So, new set of downs for the Bearcats as they have the ball on the 30 yard line. Clock rolling, 4.45 left to go in the half. And line, back to throw. It looks to get rid of it through the middle of the field. Nate Colter with the catch. And that's going to be another lot of extraordinary first down. And we've mentioned it. They've had a lot of success there in the middle of the field. Nice pitch and catch there by Henline. Got his feet set. And just rifled a missile right there to the middle of the field. Nice catch by Poulter. When Headlines had some time, he's been able to find some receivers. They've been able to have um, some good pickups, but it's going to be up to this front seven of the Wildcats, to, or I'm sorry, the Bearcats, to keep that going. And another completion, this time to short on the left side. And he's going to be just short of a first down to bring up second and one. No pun intended, right? <laughs> Oh, come on. We got a little fun tonight. Absolutely. It's a Thursday night. Thursday we got night. football last exactly. week of the regular season. Tournament play begins next week. Jefferson out trying to see if with a victory they can't get themselves a home uh, playoff game next weekend. And Spencerville looking to try to cause the upset. Well, come on. It's a balmy night tonight, too, compared to the last two. It's actually a really nice evening for high school football. Winds appear to die down a little bit too. Line with lots of room, steps up into the pocket, gonna just kind of flush it out. But that one's gonna fall incomplete. We're gonna have a, another penalty flag as one had flown a little bit earlier, and this one looks like it's gonna be a late hit. And I believe it might have been a holding penalty was the first flag. So it looked to be Logan Murphy and Aiden Heyman. Locking up right there on the far sideline. Don't know who the call is going to go against, but the game is definitely getting physical. It looked like they called for unsportsmanlike on the Bearcats. Late hit out of bounds. And we're going to have a hold against the Bearcats as well. So two penalties against the Bearcats, and they're going to have to take a trip and walk their way back a little ways. Actually, I think they got the, the uh, late hit. He appeared to show it to Jefferson. Let's take a look and see. Oh, it was both ball. Okay. I'm just hearing from somebody up here that was both on them. So he gave the signal towards Jefferson. But you know, like he said, partner, good eyes. It was against Spencerville. So second and very long as they have a second and 30 here to try to pick up some yardage. 
And we have an official timeout as he's talking to the sideline, I think explaining the penalty yardage and why it was marked off the way that it was. Now, you're Jefferson, you could pin your ears back, so to speak, and just come after him in a second down situation and try to cover that middle of the field where Spencer Bill has found their liking tonight. And like takes a snap, going to hand it off, run up the middle, bounces to the outside. Heyman trying to find some room. Gets up to about the 28 yard line before he's going to be stopped. Going to bring up third and long. Braylon Scout. Demon. I think they're asking for an explanation. Special coaching staff. Officials over speaking with head coach Chris Summers. He's been an awful lot of years here, too, didn't he? And now it's the third and 28. And I think maybe that might have been the discussion as to what down it was, especially after the penalty. It might have been a little bit of confusion. But it is third down. Headline. Waits for the snap. Drops back. Looking to air it out. Throws the screen to Coulter. Coulter going to move around, try to see if he can create some space that time. It's nice pickup on third down, but because of the penalty yardage, he's going to be very short of a first down. Wait, 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 wait. As much as he could, didn't he? And it'll be interesting to see what Spencerville does here as they are in Wildcat territory, but not sure that they'd want to take this opportunity to have to do the last part of the www.sea-river.com to apply today. Spencerville is out in punt formations. They're going to kick this one away. Low snap this time. Has to get rid of it. It's going to be blocked one more time. Jefferson picks it up. And they're going to take this one in for another touchdown. This one, this time it looks like it's going to be a horse. As he's able to get that one off the turf and take it all the way in. Yeah, that one started with a, a muff snap that Henline couldn't get his hands on. And, uh, the ball went on the ground. He picked it up. By the time he got set to punt it, he was just smothered with red hats. Cole Horston able to gather that one in and take it in for the touchdown, but there is a penalty on the field. Officials talking about it, trying to determine what happened. That one all started with a bad snap that Henline couldn't get his hands on. It was a good effort to try to get rid of it as he tried sure to kick was. it quickly, but too many Wildcats around as they're able to knock it down. Trying to see if this happened after the touchdown. Yeah, his feet got tangled up with that kitty slowed down. <laughs> See if it was on the block punt on the return. Appears to be so. I think Jefferson's going to maintain possession of the football after the block. So after the penalty is actually going to wave off the touchdown. The Wildcats will maintain possession, though. It's been a long time since this Wildcat offense has been on the field after the interception return for a touchdown. And the block punt return for a touchdown. It's Horston, though, able to take it around the edge, cuts it up, gets it down to the six-yard line. Oh, I'm sorry, it's actually Cody Bailey on the carry. Good call there. Brought down by Brody Summers along with number 11. Cody Smith. Wow. Yeah. So 
12-5 left to go in the half. And the Wildcats looking for one more score before they head to the locker room. Off the middle, Horston takes a big hit, bounces off, keeps those legs moving. And it, it looks like it's a touchdown. Thought it looked like maybe there was a turnover down there in the end zone, but either way, it's going to result in a Wildcat touchdown and another Leland Smith touchdown as they are now on top, 34 to nothing. I think you're right. I think the ball came loose, rolled in the end zone, and somebody was Johnny on the spot for Jefferson to throw on the football in the end zone. Be curious to see who gets credit for the touchdown. It's a lineman's dream. That's what you want. They're always working for. Uh, extra point is up, and it is a good as Delphus Jefferson is on the side for the special player counts. 35 to nothing, a minute 48 left to go here in the first half. We'll step aside and be right back on WOSN. a few Leland Smith touchdowns tonight and they've got it done in many different ways. We see the block punt returned almost two as that last one got called back but the Wildcats able to punch it in at the end even at when fumbling it right now everything going the Wildcats way. Well and one of the, the funny stats that's going to stick out is total yards because Spencerville is going to dominate the first half in total yards. It's the turnovers that has absolutely you know put them their backs against the wall here. When things are not going your way, sometimes I see that it works out as the kickoff that time just got it at the two-yard line. So Spencerville had to field it to try to bring it out as Nate Coulter grabbed it, moved it up the field to what looks like the 10-yard line. And right now, the Bearcats just can't catch a break. Well, that one looked like a pitching wedge. The ball was just kicked, and, I mean, it took and, and hit and spun backwards, and Coulter... And it was right there to pick the football up or had to come back and get it. And fortunately maintained possession because that is a loose ball. And he got as much as he could and got it to the 10-yard line. Snap head line. Looking to see if he can't get something going. It's short, takes the swing pass, works it off the field, gets out to about the 12-yard line. Banged out of bounds by Teeman and Scalf. Get about six, didn't he? Close to it. Six yard pickup brings up second and four. The Bearcats are on the 16 yard line. Frontline's going to hand this one off as Heyman tries to work his way through the middle of the field. But not a whole lot going on right there. It's just going to be a short game to bring up third and four. Tanner Voorhees on the stop. Clock continues to run as we wind down this first half. A minute 15 left to go. Third and three. The Bearcats looking towards the sideline for the play to come in. Headline takes the snap, drops back, looking at it, has to move around a little bit, able to get it out to Coulter. Great grab as Nate Coulter went up, hot pointed that football, and quickly places it down as the Bearcats are trying to get into hurry up mode. Yeah, Cole Hurston tried to stay with him, but that speed and that athleticism of athleticism, excuse me, of Coulter got him free in the middle of the field, and I think we got an all sides on Jefferson. So Jefferson is going to give the Bearcats a free five yards on this one. He's going to also stop the clock with 35 seconds left to go. Yeah, headline did, excuse me, partner. Headline did a really good job with his cadence right there. Drew three Jefferson Bearcats out of their defensive uh, stance with that five-yard encroachment. Spetsko does still have two timeouts remaining as they're trying to pick up some big chunk yardage here. Trying to see maybe they can't get some points before they go to the 
locker rooms. Headline chased one more time, just has to get rid of it. Throws it out into the open field. It's going to fall incomplete. Going to bring up second and five, 28 seconds left to go. And that has been pretty much the story of the night as Josh Henline has just not had a lot of time back in the pocket. When he has, we've seen him be able He's to deliver. complete some pretty nice passes, but that Jefferson defense has been back hounding him play after play. Going to hand it off to Heyman. Heyman works around to the right side to get thrown out of bounds. After, uh, looks like maybe a one-yard game. So we're going to have third and five. 22 seconds remaining here in the quarter. Logan Murray with the aggressive stop here on the near side at 45. Third and four from the 45 yard line. Going to pull it down and run. Moves to the middle of the field, up across the 50. Going to pick up a lot of jewelry first down. And we're going to have 16 seconds left to go. Spencerville. Going to get to the line. It's Logan Murray on the stop right there for the Wildcats. Called his name quite a bit here in the first half. Going to have to hurry. Eight seconds left to go. Snap off, headline, drops back, going to end out, throws it deep. And it's going to be dropped, almost intercepted by the Wildcats. But that is going to bring the first half to a close. And after two quarters, it has been on Douglas Jefferson as they are on top. The second half on WOSN. Spencerville Bearcats, 35 to nothing. I'd like to thank our scoreboard sponsor, Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Wapak, Kinnan, and Duffus. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, home style, happens here. And our instant replay sponsor tonight is Charles River. Charles River in Spencerville is the premier pharmaceutical and chemical research facility in northwest Ohio, and they are hiring. Visit jobs.criver.com to apply today. Spencerville is going to kick the football off here to get the second half under underway. And with that 30-point differential, we will be on a running clock here in the second half, at least to begin. And, and you know, Gil, you know, it's 35 nothing, and it's hard to say. Well, it's not as close as the score says. And, you know, when you hear those type of, of cliches, but Spencerville had some good things going and offensively there in the first half. They just had some things not go their way. They, they caught some back breaks, a block punt, return for a touchdown. Well, it was, it just for touchdown and it, it, was, just, it was one thing and it snowballed. But if you know, if you, I'm just curious to see what the halftime stats are. We don't have them provided for us, but you would have to think Spencerville was probably out gaining Jefferson total yards. They scored how many touchdowns off of miscues? Three? So, so they, well, they have two. The third one was actually called back, but then that was still a short field, only out to about the 15 or 20 yard line that Jefferson ended up punching in. So a couple of block punts, an interception, a lot of short fields, and Jefferson's taking advantage. Oh, it thank you. Sir. It. It's a good coverage by the kick return team sure by the Bearcats. And Delphus Jefferson going to come out to about the 28 yard line to begin their first possession here in the second half. I think that was Cody Bailey on the return there. First met by number 54, Josh Schindler for the Bearcats. So I think if you're Jefferson, you want to just play with consistency, knowing that, you know, you're possibly going to play in week 11, work on the fundamentals and work on getting better. Even with the hand off right up the middle, Cole Horston. One man to beat, and he gets by Coulter, and Horston's going to go all the way to the house. Another Leland Smith touchdown for Delphi Jefferson Wildcats. Great 
effort there by Coulter trying to run him down. He dove for him at the end zone. Just couldn't quite get him enough. Good run there. Good execution. Great blocking up front. Fundamentally did the, the things necessary. And big, big run there by Cole Hurston. So Jefferson comes out and starts the second half a lot like they ended the first half. Able to run the ball and score. They look for the extra point here. Kick is up, and it is good. And it's a score 42 to nothing. 11 of the six left to go in the game. What's the sun going to be right back on that? You always say. Insurance services is the first phone for your insurance needs. The Wildcats started this half pretty much. I don't know that you could ever have started any better. First play, long touchdown run, expanding their lead. And the Bearcats, as they are back to receive this kick, are going to try to see if they can get a couple of drives here in the second half and, and you know, just find some things. You know, there's still you, things you can do, especially last game of the season for these seniors, things that you still want to play for and fight for. You know, they're not going to give up, and they're going to continue to try to see if they can't put some points up on the board. Appears to be going to Coulter. Coulter looks to go up the middle, spins off of a tackler, but he's met by a few more Wildcats, and he's going to be taken down at the 20 nine yard line and that's where the Bearcats will come out for their first possession of the second half. Trying to see who's coming up from the bottom of the pile appears to be number 11 Bailey. You know in that last possession on that breakout touchdown I'm not so sure he was even touched. That hole was so big and he just shot through it like a rocket got into the secondary and just outran the Spencerville players to the to the end zone. Cole Horson has had a nice game tonight coming from the running back position. Jefferson has not spent a lot of time on the field. At least their offense hasn't. It's, their scores have tend to come quick. Headline now. Back out here in the second half in the shotgun. It's going to take the snap, hand it off up the middle to Heyman. Heyman looking for a little bit of space. And is drugged down after about a three-yard gain. It's going to bring up second and seven, it looks like. Second and six after a four-yard pickup by Hammond. Carter Ragnar on the stop. 6.30 sophomore. Got a bright future in front of him here for the Wildcats. Really athletic, moves really well. Not afraid to get his nose in there and make a big hit. They're going to throw this one out. Able to get it over to short, short I believe. That is short. <laughs> nice pick up by the Bearcats as they're able to pick up 14 on that play. And that's going to be a lot of jewelry first down. Luke Rohde on the stop there for the Wildcats. So as we see it saw in the first half, the Bearcats, Offense when they're able to get into rhythm, may able to make some good things happen. They're looking to see if they can't finish the drive here. Headline looks to get rid of it, throws it out, not able to connect with short. That one's going to be incomplete. Yeah, he showed a pump fake like he was trying to draw the secondary up. Good job by Jefferson, staying fundamentally sound defensively there, not biting on the play action pass and the pump fake. So second and ten for the Bearcats, hand line in the shotgun. He's joined in the backfield by Heyman. Uh, bad snake hand line, ends up having a fall on it and he's going to be dipped. And that's kind of what we've seen out of the Bearcats. When they've been getting some things going, we've seen just a bad luck, a couple of missed snaps. We talked about the block punts, the interceptions. And those things can tend to snowball on you, especially when you're trying to climb out of a hole. Well, as frustrating as it's going to be for Mr. Henline, he did do the fundamentally sound thing, didn't try to pick it up, dove on the football. Smart play by that young man. 
Wolfpack's going to bring up third and long. It's third and 23 from the 34-yard line. And drops back, looking to end it out. Steps into a pass across the middle. Is able to connect with Short. And Short's going to be down at the 49-yard line to going to bring up about fourth and probably six. So if Spencerville wants to go for it, they have an opportunity here, and they will. Hey, that's an impressive play. He stepped up into the pocket, threw it away from the defender, and Short made a nice catch. He threw that football away from the defender where it was not going to be intercepted. Short got down on his knees and kept it from hitting the ground. Nice nice uh, play there by Bearcats. Let's go quickly up to the line of scrimmage, trying to see if maybe they couldn't get Jefferson to jump. Backed out as they waited for the play to come in from the sideline. Headline now gets the snap. Going to throw it out short. Going to look for the first down. And I believe he's going to get it as he is. Gets it up to the, I believe that's going to be the 42-yard line. So another lot of jewelry first down. And that's an impressive first down pickup after being at third and 23 a few plays ago. Team in with the stop. For Jefferson. Headline. Hand it off to Heyman up the middle. Heyman finds a little bit of space that time. And he's going to have a nice pickup on first down. Going to bring up second and six. Good job by Heyman right there, keeping his legs churning, trying to get as much as he could. Appears to be Agner on the stop along with Logan Murray. Now Spencerville building a little momentum here, trying to see if they can't get things going their direction on their first drive here of the second half. Here comes the blitz, nicely picked up by the line, but just off the fingertips of Short. Not sure that there was a lot of room if he did gather that one in. Falls incomplete. Going to bring up third and seven for the Bearcats. Well, I'll bet Spence would like to have that one back because Coulter was wide open at the 10-yard line. I just don't think Henline saw him. There was a blip coming from the Wildcats there, so maybe his focal point was to unload that as quick as he could. Here's Henline. Going to go deep one more time. This yeah, time to Coulter. And Coulter not able to gather it in as the Wildcats almost come up with an interception. And it looked like almost like Coulter might have came back prior to that play and said something to the headline, like letting him know, hey, I'm going to be open. Look for me out here. Headline tried to make that deep connection. Good defense by the Wildcats, though. Yeah, somebody got back there defensively, got their hand on it and deflected it. Pretty nice thrown ball. But what a well-timed defensive play to get back there and get their hand on it and knock it to the ground. Oops. The Bearcats at fourth and seven, trying to convert one more time. Headline drops, going to get rid of it, gets it out. Hammond with a head of steam, nice cut back to the middle. He's able to pick up good yardage, and that's going to lead to another long extremely first down. Sure was. He got that on pure athleticism and heart. They had him wrapped up where he was not going to get to the first down marker in his second effort. And his athleticism got him there. Nice, nice. Uh, Effort there by Hayden Hain or uh, Hayden Heyman, excuse me. So now pressure it out for the Bearcats. Ten line drops back. Another screen. Coulter now into the middle. Works to the outside. Good spin, and he's going to be taken down after about an eight-yard gain. Cody Bailey with the unassisted tackle there, got him by the ankles. Good block there by Dylan Short. Free enough culture to get another five or six yards so after seeing, that catch. So we're seeing another good drive out of the Bearcats as this offense is moving, getting a little bit of rhythm. And it looks like it's still coming against the number one defense of the Wildcats. So see if they're able to punch one in here with the clock running. Three minutes left to go here in the third quarter. Aiming up the middle. Going to be tripped up just shy of the first down. It's going to depend on where they're going to mark it, but I think they're going to get them just a little short. And that is going to bring up third and short. I think that was Logan Murray, like you said, on the trip up, slowed him down, got him off balance, or his teammates could help with the, the stop. Third and short. Josh Henline back in the shotgun, joined by Hammond to his left. 
He's pitched to Heyman. Heyman looking for the sticks and gets drugged down. Where are they going to mark him? And he's going to bring up fourth and one as he did not make it. Here to be Braylon Stauff on the stop there for the Wildcats on the far side. Like you said, if anything, they may have lost about a half a yard. So Hayden Heyman trying to get to the sticks, not able to do it. Good effort, though. Fourth down, headline. And the shotgun going to take a look towards the sidelines. Appears to be an audible here. See Heyman switch sides now, gets to the right of headline. Going to throw it out quick on the slant. Connects with Coulter. Great pass that time and a great catch by Nate Coulter. The seniors connecting on a good point for another Lawless Jewelry timeout. Or, I'm sorry, first down. Appeared to be scalp on the stop. Great execution on a fourth down right there on that quick slant. Snap hand line. First and goal. Looking for the junior. And he's able to connect. A nice catch. First catch of the game for the freshman, Neil Winslow, as he is able to get that in and gets the Bearcats on the scoreboard. Nice pitch and catch hand line to the freshman. So hand line leads a nice drive by the Bearcats. Caps it off with a touchdown. And the Bearcats. Got to be feeling pretty good about that drive. They, they really, I mean, considering, you know, going in 35 to nothing, partner, they could have folded the tents and given them credit. They come out and drove the football down the field and punched it in. So the kick is up, and it is good. Stands 42 to 7, a minute six left to go here in the third quarter. We just decided to be back on them. Finally get on the scoreboard after, you know, pretty rough first half where they couldn't quite catch a break. Did a nice job. They, at one point on the drop, being third and 23, converted several fourth downs as well. So now they're going to come back out in defense as the Wildcats take the kick off the middle. Breaks it to the outside. One man to beat. And he's able to get by him, but he stumbles, keeps his feet, and he is going to take it all the way in as Braylon Stauff takes the kickoff all the way to the house. That's impressive because he broke probably three tackles in the process. Spence a couple of angles on him, just couldn't bring him down. He just kept churning those legs and turned it into a foot race and found his way to the end zone. All facets of the game working for the Wildcats as they now have an interception return for a touchdown. A block, a block return for a touchdown. A kickoff now return for a touchdown. They are getting it done on special teams for sure tonight. Couldn't have said any better myself. It's been one of those where special teams have played a huge part for the Wildcats tonight. When you can get defensive and special teams touchdowns, mm. you know, there's not too often you're not going to come away with the victory. And the Delphus Jefferson Wildcats with the kick going inside 49 to 7, and they're on their way to a big victory tonight. We will step aside and be right back on WOS. jobs.criver.com to apply today. Tonight's top touchdown sponsors are Leland Smith. Leland Smith Insurance Services, your first call for all your insurance needs. So we just saw another Leland Smith touchdown by the Wildcats. They have just been able to get everything going tonight. A long kickoff return for Braylon Scalf. It was a very impressive run as he went up the middle of the field, broke it to the outside, had to break a couple of tackles, keep his feet. Able to get it into the end zone as the Wildcats get ready to kick it off. 30 seconds left to go here in the third quarter. Yeah, 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 yeah. Heyman, off 
Offense is able to gather it back in. Tries to go to the outside, has to cut it up to the middle, and he's met by a host of Wildcats. Cody Bailey with the initial touch there, didn't make the tackle, but slowed him down for the Wildcat defensive special team unit to make the stop. With 15 seconds left to go here in the third quarter, the Wild, or I'm sorry, the Bearcats come back out on offense. Looks like not, not any changes to the offense as Josh Headline trots back out at quarterback. We'll see if they try to snap it before the end here of the quarter or they just let the quarter run out. And they do get the snap ball. Headline going to go deep. Has Coulter in the middle of the field. Great catch at the 50-yard line. Able to get down to the 45. And that's going to bring a third quarter to a close with a big pass play from the senior. Josh Headline to the junior, Nate Coulter. Welcome back to the first day. Just come to my little next jewelry. Next jewelry is family owned and operated jewelry from our first opinion. Visit them in Coldwater and Big Order or online at Laudix.com. First and 10 from the 44-yard line for the Bearcats to start the fourth quarter. See a pitch up to Heyman. He gets wrapped up, dropped for a, about a two to three-yard loss. We'll see where they mark him. Appeared to be Bailey coming up from his defensive back position, shedding the block on the outside, making the stop. He also made the stop there on that deep pass to so, Alter. So only ended up being a one-yard loss on that play. So second 11 for the Bearcats. Headline drops back, looking aired out one more time. Screen across the middle. Oh, he is met with some authority and athleticism. Let's see who it was. Coulter with the catch is dropped immediately. As you said, Gil, and it's a dangerous part of the field. There as the linemen were right there waiting for him, and he was dropped hard. Look to be Murray. Wagner, possibly. But that's one of those. Hello. Nice tackle there. Fundamentally sound. Nice catch. So third and long for the Bearcats. Headline. Back in the shotgun. Drops back. Looks to fire. Able to get it out and through the hands of Short, who has been pretty sure handed tonight, but on that one, not able to gather it in. It's going to bring up fourth and 11 for the Bearcats. Yep, just a little peekaboo took his eye off the football. Fourth down. Nice throw by Hemline. Right between the numbers. Those you got to secure. And the space was there. It was a nice route uh, that time run by Short. Just. Not able to gather in the catch. So, fourth and long for the big cats. Headline takes a couple extra steps back. Going to have the pooch punt. And this one's going to take a bear cat roll. And it is going to settle at about the seven yard line. Nicely done there by the bear cats, Mr. Headline. So now the bear cat defense. Only been on the field for one play here in this second half so far, and that was the long run by Cole Horston to start the third quarter. And since then, it's been the Bearcat offense and the Wildcat special teams. Like we have a change of quarterback potentially. As the handoff goes off, it's still number two. <laughs> Having a hard time <laughs> seeing. Thought maybe uh, Lou Grody had come in to take some snaps, but it's still Trent Teeman back there, the quarterback for the Wildcats. I'll give you my glasses, but I don't think they're going to help you, Nate. <laughs> so, what was the camouflage look tonight? A loss of three on the play brings up second and 13 for the Wildcats. Nice play there by Spencerville defensively. Team in the backfield joined by Cole Horston. 
Hand off to Horson up the middle. A little bit of space. Bounce off some tacklers. He's going to pick up about a gain of five to bring up third and eight for the Wildcats. Somebody got him by the ankles. Appeared to be Brody Summers, number 52. Called his name quite a bit tonight for the visitors. Thirty-five left to go here in the fourth quarter. Delphus Jefferson on top, 49-7. to seven. Demon takes a snap, drops back, looks to air it out. Long pass up the middle. Good effort to come back to the ball, but that one is going to fall incomplete. You know, looks like we may have, you know, looks like he's okay. Looks like we may have had an injured Wildcat on the play, but he bounces up. He's all right. And that's going to bring up fourth and nine as the punt team for the Wildcats comes uh, onto the field. I was watching Tiegman there, partner, and boy, he took a heck of a shot by Isaac Kill in the end zone. Bounced right up. I don't know if I could do that after taking a hit like that. He got him right in the rib cage, clean hit. But I think that had a huge part on why that football didn't get to the person he was planning on it going to come up short. So, Bearcat defense holds strong, but a great punt by the Wildcats, and that's going to roll very far back. Coulter able to finally gather it in around the 24-yard line. Brings it up before he's forced out of bounds, but a great punt that time. As it looked like maybe the Bearcats would get some pretty good field position, but they're going to come out and they're going to start on the 32-yard line, it looks like, with 7.26 left to go in the game. Forty-nine to seven, Wildcats up top. But we've seen the Bearcat offense get some momentum going, have some good plays, and they're going to try to see if they can't finish this game strong. Both teams coming in second and third and punting. Line takes a snap. Looks to get rid of it quickly this time. Short was able to gather it in, tried to go lateral, but gets tripped up and dropped after about an eight-yard game. Nice up and field tackle there by Luke Ruddy. Nice pitch and catch. Short's been the favorite target, no question tonight for him line. Second and short, hand off to Heyman up the middle. And not able to get a whole lot of room that time, and he's going to be taken down. It looks right at the first down marker, and they're going to say that that is a lot of jewelry first down for the Bearcats. And it looks like we're going to have a timeout on the field. We'll be right back to WOSA. Touchdown sponsors, Leland Smith. Leland Smith and Strip Services, your first call for your insurance needs. Tony Heyman able to get up under his own power. Look like he just had a cramp as he walked off the field. He'll have to come out for at least this play as the Bearcats line up on this first and ten. Headline rolls to his right, looking to throw. Goes deep along the sidelines, has his man open, gathered in. And they're going to say out of bounds. As it looked like Coulter wasn't able to get one of his feet in, but it was a great effort by Nate Coulter to get that ball in and try to stay in bounds. Well, you see an explosive when he gets, he gets momentum. He can fly right up that sideline. Yeah, we've seen the junior shake open a couple of times tonight and have some big plays for the Bearcats. A young man's going to break next year in front of Romeo Jr. So headline, one more time in the shotgun. Going to fire it out to the right. Heyman came back into the game with lots of room as he was able to get out in front and pick up another Laudix jewelry first down. Good job by headline. He took a shot again. This ball is going to be out. It looks like they're going to mark him at the 47-yard line. 
First and ten for the Bearcats. Not quite sure who chased him out over there on the boundary. At the 42 for the Wildcats. Five minutes left to go in the contest. The Bearcats on the move. Headline. Going to go one more time to the air. Tries to connect and just out of the reach of a diving Nate Coulter. Going to bring up second and ten. Right idea, just timing wasn't there on this particular play. Tried to get him with the sticks. Bearcats settled now, headline in the shotgun. Hammond flanked to his left. Gonna go deep, looks to throw. Had to find somebody open, and that one's going to be in and out of the hands of his intended receiver. Going to fall to the turf to bring up third and ten. Yeah, that appeared to be a attempted to go to number one. I believe that's the freshman, as you were saying earlier. Able to connect on the touchdown earlier in the game, but can't gather that one in. That's the Bearcats with the clock rolling sit at third and ten at the 42-yard line. And he drops back one more time, looking to air it out. Screen's going to go to Heyman. Heyman's going to have to make some guys miss, and this time he is gathered up and taken down before he can get anywhere. It's going to be a loss of two on the play. Pretty open field tackle right there. Let's see if we can get a number on that. It looked like Logan Murray came in for that tackle. Looks like Vincent Murray, not Logan, Vincent Murray. Right, last name, wrong first name. Those sixes and zeros look alike, those dark numbers. So fourth and long for the Bearcats, 2.45 left to go, and we're going to have a timeout by Spencerville. Let's just say Murray was on the stop. How's that sound? <laughs> so we'll keep it here in this time. Out. And, you know, again, we talked about that this is the last weekend of high school football, and everybody's looking forward to the playoffs starting next week. Every division playing on Friday night. And, you know, these Wildcats with the win guarantee themselves to play in week 11, but they still have a home game um, in play as well, depending on what kind of happens through the rest of the region. And, you know, it should be a competitive region for them, but you got to look what you see out of these Wildcats, and they're going to be a tough out no matter who they match it's up with. It's going to be a long night tomorrow night for the coaching staff because they're going to be sitting down with pencil and paper doing their calculating to see where they're going to be placed, and they're probably going to keep an eye on Joe Idle because he does such a phenomenal job updating his computer points. But, yeah, like you said, they're playing for a home playoff game. You know, let's we'll see where the chips may fall. It's going to be pretty nice for the kids to have tomorrow off, typically a Saturday off, um, depending upon the schedule and who has a home game here, whether it be them or St. John's. But, yeah, they're going to be able to sit back and enjoy tomorrow and keep an eye on the scoreboard and see who they play next week. And what do you think of these Thursday night games? We've seen those a couple of times. You know, Shawnee and LCC started the year on Thursday night. We've seen some other teams play Thursday night. And here, rivalry game is headline goes deep. Connects with Nick Coulter on a beautiful pass and catch sure. for a deep touchdown as the Bearcats make it a 49-13 game on the Lee Smith touchdown. You know, getting back to your question about Thursday night games, I know it's one of those things they do in Columbus. They've done it for the past three or four years, and they have a Thursday night game that they televise down in the Columbus area. I like it. You know, it's getting to the point now where they're having a difficult time finding officials, and, you know, I've seen some games being moved to Saturdays and also Thursdays because the officials – getting the officials rounded up or being able to find enough officials is getting to be a problem. So I, I, I like it. Um, it's definitely something different. I know they do a lot of girls' basketball and volleyball 
on Thursday night, so it may be a thing in the future. Saw the extra point, no good to keep the score at 49-13. You know, I, I like the Thursday night games, you know, especially for some of these marquee matchups. You know, this is a big rivalry game, and they've been playing for a lot of years. This, this is a big game for both communities. You know, they kind of get that, that spotlight. But as you mentioned, it, it does help relieve some things. You know, as the officials, we know statewide, there's a there's a massive official uh, officiating shortage. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Board. Absolutely. Um, and, and, you know, so when you're able to move some of these games around, you can make it special for the kids, but at the same time, you know, some of the um, logistics as far as the officials and, and getting things taken care of uh, can help that as well. But I like the feel with Thursday night, especially, uh, you know, week 10, these guys get a chance to sit tomorrow night, watch everybody else play. You know, maybe, you know, coaches can go out to some games. I'm sure they have an idea of who they may see come next week when it all shakes down. They may be going to different locations. You may send two coaches here, two coaches there. It's, it's great because it's a Route 66 game. They're not going to get home real late tonight. Obviously, school tomorrow on Friday, but yeah, I think it's just a it's a thing, and I think it's going to be here to stay. Uh, it's just going to be who's going to jump on board first as far as conferences, and but I, I do think it's going to be a thing that uh, you're going to see a constant change in, in sports and the alignment of it. Yeah, absolutely. And especially with a week 10, you know, now Jefferson's going to have an extra day to, to rest and heal everybody up and to, to get ready for next week as we see Spencerville come out and, and it first looked like they were going to try to line up for an onside kick as you see Jefferson moving around trying to audible, get everybody in the right position. And the onside kick, a little bit of a pooch kick that time as Jefferson's able to feel it. At the 35-yard line. We're trying to see who that was that stepped up there. Did you happen to catch who that happened to be? I did not actually happen to happen right. We got a little bit of a post right here, and that where he happened to catch it just happened to be right behind oh, the post on me. 33. 33. That would be Mr. Zach House. Did a nice job securing that little, what do you want to call it, pooch kick. So the Wildcats come out on offense with a 49-13 lead. 2.20 left to go here in the game. Appear to be a new quarterback for the Wildcats. Not quite sure number-wise who it is. Took a handoff. That one's going to be stopped by the Wildcats. The new quarterback out is number three, Luke Rohde, the freshman. Off to Logan Miller, another freshman. Didn't quite see who made the stop there for Spencerville. And I think after that last possession, we saw a couple of big hits by the Bearcat defense. Jefferson want to keep everybody healthy, get mm -hmm. some other guys some playing Good time point. here on the during varsity time, but definitely don't want to come away with any injuries here in the late game part of this game. Well, get the young kids some experience, too, playing varsity football. Both sides of the football, it appears that way that the coaches have decided to do that. That's great to see. Luke Rody takes a snap, hands it up, off, up into the middle. After about a six-yard gain that time. Looks like Logan Miller, ball carrier. That's Miller on the nice carry on second down. Going to bring up third and six for the Wildcats. Austin McMichael, a freshman for Spencerville, 5'7", 120 pound. Defensive back on the stop. And with a minute left to go in the game, the Wildcats come up on a third and six. Luke Rohde in the shotgun, flanked by Logan Miller. Snap, hands it off to Miller. Miller bobbled a little bit, and that little bit of bobbling allowed for the Bearcat defense to get into the backfield for the stop to bring up fourth down. And at that point, the Wildcats don't have to take another snap, and that is going to bring this game to a close. Bill, the Wildcats tonight got it done in every aspect of the game. We saw special teams working defense with the score even. And the offense looked good as well, even though they really didn't have to do the heavy lifting tonight. No, they didn't have to do the heavy lifting, but I'll tell you that when you do the little things in practice, the special teams, and to see the payoff in week 10, that's, that's going to be a, 
a very happy locker room knowing you're going to be playing for week 11. For the Bearcats, you know, they're going to be saying goodbye to some seniors as they move on to their winter sports and then spring sports. But you know what? They could have folded the tents. We talked about this at halftime, being down 35 to nothing. Those kids showed some resiliency and some heart, and they played for not only their family, but they also played for Spencerville and so Coach Sumner's got to be proud of them, you know, for their effort throughout the season. Even though they didn't show it in the win column, uh, they, they, they laid everything on the line and and uh, wrapped up the 22 campaign. With the win, the Wildcats have guaranteed them a spot in the postseason. As you see the fans coming to the field to celebrate with their team. Now we have to sit back and watch and see how things play out tomorrow night to determine whether or not they will have a home game back here at Champions Food next Friday night. We want to thank everybody for joining us on this Thursday night. And we had a great game, a rivalry game. Even though the score got a little more excited, the Big Cats put up a big fight, but the Wildcats with their defense special teams were just a little bit too much tonight as they come away with a victory, 49-13. Yo, usually don't see it much in the fall. It was good spending time with you in a fall football game. Awesome. Hopefully see a lot more once we turn the calendar towards basketball here in just a few short weeks. Well, stay tuned Sunday, you know, what Patrick does and the crew and the cameramen, they get all together and they're going to gather all this information. Mark Sean, stay tuned, ladies and gentlemen, because the brackets will be coming out. And I know WOSN uh, is going to be carrying quite a few games of so Stay tuned, and let's see where we're going to go and keep, keep pushing this high school sports. Lots of football left to play. It is tournament time now as we look towards the postseason and, and see if any of our teams from our area can take away the big trophy when it's all said and done. What a final time for the champions. We're going to have Nate Gallagher. We're going to have Darren Gilbert. Thanks for joining us. Have a great night, everybody. <laughs>